So where does this leave Twitter? Well, those who tweet might not know it, but what they write is subject to the same laws of libel and contempt of court as anything published by the old media. Well, with me now in the studio is Mark Lewis, a lawyer specialising in libel law, and social media expert Kate Busman. Well, Kate Busman first. Lord McAlpine clearly determined to teach Twitter a lesson. Has it already changed the kind of things people are tweeting? I think it will take time before we know that, actually. Um, but anything that helps people understand that they, just because they don't know what the law is, they're still subject to it, is a good thing. People are saying Twitter's already quieter, a bit more circumspect. You don't buy that? Well, maybe. I'd love to see the stats. There is an awful lot of tweets every day. There are 400 million tweets a day. So it would be interesting to see whether the numbers really have changed. Well, Mark Lewis, on that sense of scale, I mean, it really is quite a tall order to, to try and go after, a, a, a well, dozens, hundreds, thousands of, of Twitter Twitterers, isn't it? Well, I, I don't think the um, Twitter's over by any means, and I don't think they will go after everybody or could go after everybody. The, uh, the law looks at, you know, so if, the, if ITV has tweeted something or put something out there, then ITV sued, the damages are taken account. Very few people um, could afford, Lord McAlpine might be able to afford to sue people for no money, but most people would not be able to do so. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I put out, I asked people on Twitter what they thought today, and there was clearly a, a view that it was a bit heavy-handed. Someone called at Sisterhood UK said, "Why does it feel like the proles are being got at? Class war, libel is a rich man's game." Well, there is an element of it being a rich man's game, and of course, the government's got proposals in for libel reform and the, the uh, uh, affordability of libel costs. So it's only rich people who might be able to afford them if the government gets its way. So, I mean, hopefully people will do it. We see with Lord McAlpine how serious saying something can be and people need to be able to challenge things that shouldn't be tweeted. Kate Busman, is it right that, that Lord McAlpine takes action for the greater public good to reel in the, the lynch mob? I think so. If you look at what happened after the Ched Evans rape case, he was the footballer who was convicted of rape and a number of people went online and named the victim, which is illegal. And... Um, and some of them were fined for that, but it's the, the more cases like that that actually that there is action taken over, the better. People need to understand that what they say on Twitter can be seen by anyone and can have a terrible effect on people's lives. Mark Lewis, do people need to understand media law effectively if they want to tweet? Well, well, there is an element. I mean, people just need to be responsible about tweeting. It's called cit citizen journalism, so it, they're a law for journalists. So all journalists learn law. Of course, the people who are tweeting need to be aware of the consequences. Kate Buffman, let me put another tweet to you that I got this afternoon from at Bohemian Girl. Twitter has many millions of followers globally. This is like a midge trying to bite an elephant. Twitter's too big to be reined in, isn't it? Well, yes. I mean, you can't sue everybody. If there's 400,000 people who either tweeted or retweeted something about McAlpine, obviously he's not going to be able to sue everybody. But anything that helps people understand it a little bit better has to be a good thing. Mark Lewis? Yeah, I think people have to be aware of the fact that they might be able to be, be sued and they might be vulnerable. So people need to watch out for what they're saying. I mean, they're pressing a tweet. It's the same as yelling something out. They wouldn't stand outside Lord McAlpine's house and, and yell these things at him without checking their facts. They wouldn't go. So before they press send on, on a tweet, they need to know their facts. Kate Busman, is, is the anarchy of Twitter being lost, the original spirit of Twitter? I don't know that it was anarchic in the beginning. I mean, it was set up as a way to send a bunch of text messages to a group of people. It wasn't set up for anarchy. It's been used by lots of people in interesting ways. The most obvious case, obviously, is during the Arab Spring. But it's equally used by people to just chat to each other and, and have a, a bit of fun. It, it doesn't have to be about anarchy. It's, it's basically just another way of communicating, like email is. Kate Busman, Mark Lewis, thank you very much for joining me. John.